These leaping fish are part of an invasion, an ecological disaster on the move. Fish are Asian carp, and they've been ruining lakes and streams everywhere they go. Asian carp were brought into the U.S. in the 1970s to clean algae out of ponds in the lower Mississippi River Basin. Soon several floods carried the carp out of the ponds and into the larger Mississippi. From there, the carp had an almost infinite amount of space and food and were able to procreate at a rapid rate and spread quickly through the rest of the Mississippi River and its tributaries. Now looking for more space and food, the carp travel north and are threatening to colonize the Great Lakes. Michigan is known for its naturally beautiful waterways and coastlines. This generates millions annually for our state's economy, and an invasive species such as Asian carp threatens that. If the carp were to colonize the Great Lakes and surrounding tributaries, it would spell disaster for the ecosystem and the economy. Asian carp are extremely good filter feeders who grow up to be 20 pounds and can eat up to a fourth of their weight every day. This filtering capability is what helps them run over local populations of fish. They eat all of the food and leave none behind for the locals. The carp are also amazing jumpers. They are able to leap 10 feet into the air, which can be harmful to boaters and water goers alike. There are three different types of carp threatening the Great Lakes, the Big Head, the Silver, and the Grass Carp. The carp have moved up the Des Plaines River and are now working their way towards the Chicago area waterway system, and from there they would move into Lake Michigan. positive effects in the Illinois Mississippi River system where they have they have established themselves. We just don't see positive effects. They are voracious, they grow very, very large, which means they need a lot of food to sustain themselves. And when you add new species to the system, they're automatically going to take the place of other species. They're either going to push them completely out of the system or they're going to impact their uh, um, their prevalence within that system. What we see in the Illinois uh, system is that uh, with these particular species of Asian carp, they pretty much take over sections of the river, um, excluding, excluding all other fish species. And they've got some interesting things in their, in their life history that allows them to do that. They can uh, spawn multiple times a year. Um, most fish, as far as the Great Lakes fish go, uh, have a single spawning event. Uh, they're usually either fall spawners or spring spawners, and that's the one time of the year that they, they get together, they mate, and they lay eggs. Um, with uh, silver and, and big head carp, they, uh, uh, they're able to spawn multiple times a year, which of course allows them to reproduce at a much more much faster rate, which allows them to kind of uh, have an advantage over other groups in the system. In order to stop the advancing carp, scientists from all over have put their minds together. The Army Corps of Engineers set up underwater electric barriers south of the Great Lakes and the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. These barriers were the first but not only defense suggested to stop the advancing carp. Chemical treatment, different or improved barriers, and even separation of the river with the Great Lakes have been suggested to stop the carp from entering the Great Lakes. One solution to this problem is what has already been put in place. Electric barriers separate the Asian carp-filled rivers from our beloved Great Lakes at this point. Although it is generally agreed upon among scientists that this is only a, a short-term solution, it's the best defense we have at this point to keep the carp out of the lake. Electricity is a deterrent to the fish. Um, so as fish uh, run into an electric current, they um, or move away from it from a discomfort uh, situation. Um, it is the best. Uh, it is the best deterrent that we have so far. Uh, most people believe that the cause, which is the Chicago area waterway system, known shorthand as the cause, is um, probably the largest threat for the spread of Asian carp into the Great Lakes. Many people think that the barriers are doing a fine job as is and that nothing further needs to be done to prevent the spread. The electric barriers are located just outside of Chicago in the Des Plaines River. The barriers consist of three separate barriers that all give off electricity. 
When the fish swim through the fields, they are exposed to electric pulses that deter them from continuing. As you go from one barrier to the next, the power increases. This prevents any fish who may have gotten through the last barrier from continuing down the river. As of now, the barriers appear as though they have worked. Little, if any, fish have gotten through. The electric barrier proposal is very attractive to people because its cost is low and is very feasible. The barriers are already in place. Also, there is no need for any further construction or deliberation on the topic. This means that no additional money needs to be spent to find the solution. Another good thing about this proposal is that it allows the shipping lanes to stay open. Although keeping the carp out is the biggest priority, the shipping industry creates millions of dollars in revenue and stimulates our country's economy. Using the electric barriers as a means of keeping the carp out allows these shipping lanes to stay open and our country can continue making that money. So this proposal actually makes money rather than spending it. There is no further work needed for the electric barriers to stop the spread of invasive carp, and it causes no harm to the economy or ecosystem of the region. This proves why it is such a solid proposal. By keeping the barriers up and running, the job of stopping the carp is completed with a low cost and low effort. Another option being discussed is the physical separation of the lakes and the river. The Chicago Sanitary and Shipping Canal is a man-made canal that hooks the two water systems together. Now the threat of Asian carp moving into the lakes has caused panic and calls for the separation of the lakes. The separation would be done by a physical barrier in the middle of the canal that would no longer allow any type of aquatic flow through the river, including shipping and invasive species such as Asian carp. The Army Corps of Engineers are putting together a report entitled The Great Lakes Mississippi River Interbasin Study, which details different solutions being presented to deal with the problem. The Glimmis report has not been fully released, but the Army says separation is viable and a permanent solution. Since the Glimmis report won't be finished until 2015, the Great Lakes Coalition has made estimates and released its own findings to the public. In the report, they document how downriver separation is the only permanent solution to the Asian carp threat. The rest of the solutions offered are effective now, but they lack the long-term effectiveness that the separation would give, but at the same time come at a cost. The Great Lakes Coalition estimates the price of the separation barrier to be around $9.5 billion. Though a hefty price tag now, the prevention of the carp is of the utmost importance and would pay itself off later on. If the Great Lakes were invaded by the carp, it would cost millions if not billions to the economy of the region. So this barrier is more of an investment for the future. And while some say it is pointless to spend all that money on this barrier because of the other options, nobody knows if those options will stop the carp forever, unlike the barrier separation, which is the only permanent solution out there right now. If there's no connection between the systems, no carp or other invasive species can get through and it takes care of the problem. The price would be high, but necessary to keep our state and region beautiful. One of the authors of the Great Lakes Coalition's report Dave Ulrich said it best. Yes, it's expensive, but the cost of doing nothing is greater. And it would be if the carp got into the Great Lakes. And yes, electric barriers have worked so far, but eDNA of the carp have been found upstream of the barriers, which means that sooner or later the carp will get past the barriers and into the Great Lakes, which is going to mean more money for the state of Michigan to pay to try and fix the problem once they're already past the barrier. And once they're already past the barrier, they will probably not be able to be removed without serious uh, cost factors and issues. So it just makes the most sense now to sever the connection and uh, separate the Great Lakes and the Chicago area water system so that no Asian carp or other invasive species will ever come into the Great Lakes and pollute the beautiful natural resource that we have 